friends, welcome back to another episode of my channel. My name's Kimberly. I'm the owner of Drip From The Crip Products, where creepy essentially meets classy. And on my YouTube channel, I show you how to make handcrafted luxury candles and other small business entrepreneurial things. To the 10 people who watched my first video, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Sorry if my face is like, whited out. I'm pale as a ghost and videos just look so much better with like natural bright lighting, but I'm just so pale that my face gets whited out as anyway. So bear with me. Today, I'm going to be teaching you something super exciting. Today, we're going to be learning how I marble my candles. So if you've been following me um, or seen some of my uh, candles that I already have released, one of my signature candles is our marbled candle. And so essentially um, what I mean by that is we take a normal candle and then we hand marble it. So it comes out super unique. No one else will have the same candle as you um, because we hand marble it. So it just gives it this really swanky tie dye color feature, which is super awesome. I have here my death before decaf uh, handcrafted candle and it features coconut apricot uh, cream wax, and then we also marble it. So today we're going to be reviewing how to marble your candle and let's get into it. Okay, so first let's talk about the things that you will need. It's actually a super simple process. It's so cool because when you look at the marbled candle, you're like, whoa, it's so eye catching. You, I don't know, it just looks like it's really complicated to achieve and it's like, wow, like how did they do that? Um, but you'll find out that it's actually very simple. It's hard and it's simple. So it's simple in the fact that doing it is not super complicated at all. However, similar to like tie dyeing a t-shirt or doing something like flow art, the results are always going to be different. So if, if you like, if you want things to be perfect and if something is slightly off, you get a little finicky about it, this <laughs> may not be for you or it's for you, but just keep in mind, um, the results are always different because you are marbling it. It's like tie dyeing it. So just keep that in mind, just because something turns out different than how you want it during this process doesn't mean that it's not a good product. It's going to look different every single time. So heed my warning on that. So let's first review some of the items that you are going to need. So first, I highly recommend rubber gloves of any thickness, just something that's going to protect your hands from the, sorry, my fingers are bad again, my nails are never good. So something that's going to protect your hands from all of the dye you're going to be using. We use candle dye and it's very, it stains everything. It stains your fingers. It's just gonna get all over the place because this is just a messy process in general, but it's fun. So I highly recommend rubber gloves. You can do disposable gloves. Um, I try to stay away from those because I feel like I just throw so many of them away versus like a durable. I got, I literally got these from Albertsons or something for like two or three dollars. These are just O Cedar Playtex hand saver gloves. They're just like regular kitchen gloves and they're thicker. So they protect my hands from the heat, which I will show you in a second. Things are gonna get hot in here. We're gonna get a little bit hot in here. So yeah, these gloves, lifesaver. I cannot express how much I highly recommend. This is a me thing. Not all candle people wear safety goggles. I am terrified of something just happening to my eyes. And when you're working with candles, especially marbling candles, you're working with such high heats that most of the time you're working with glass vessels. And so when you're working with glass and heat, it could happen that your, uh, your vessel either bursts, it could crack, it could explode. I haven't experienced that knock on wood yet, but there's exploding candle jars that have happened. You're also working with fumes and fragrance oils in high capacities. So I highly recommend safety goggles. I wear them. You don't have to, obviously. This is your, your whole thing, but I wear safety goggles. So that's on our list for today. You're going to need your candle dye. So I keep them, look, look how messy it is. See what I'm saying? Like you're just gonna, candle dye just gets everywhere and it's thick. It's like thick consistency. So you're gonna want your candle dye. This came in a bottle that has a dropper. 
You'll see how my process works. You don't need a dropper necessarily for this, unless if you're, you're marbling huge candles, but candle dye is so strong and it's so like dense um, in consistency and coloring. You do not even need a full drop of dye. You'll, you'll see in a second, like a very, very minuscule amount of this goes a long way. Look, this is green and it just dripped on there and look, it looks black. So yeah, you only need a really small amount. So if your dye doesn't have a dropper, no worries at all. This is not gonna inhibit you from be able, being able to do this. So for this process, you will also need candles that are already cured. I made these yesterday. So depending on the wax that you use, I've noticed that for marbling your candle, it doesn't really impact it how long I've cured it. So just to get the process going, I have been waiting like a day or two before marbling it. Uh, but in the process of marbling it, we're going to be melting down our candles a little bit. So say if I waited a week, my wax will be cured a little bit more and the wax will be a little bit harder versus today. My wax is probably gonna melt a little quicker because I literally just melted it yesterday and it's only been curing for a day. So something to consider. And next we will have the most important magical tool that you never knew you would ever need in your home. <laughs> the thing that saves my life on a daily basis, a heat gun. Woo! Pew, 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 pew. I use this thing so much. This is from painting a while ago, but um, this is a heat gun. You can buy this literally for like $20 at Home Depot. This is how much mine was. This is like a smaller one, but it's a heat gun. It blows heat. It does not create a flame or anything like that. And many candle business owners, people that make candles, candlers, we use heat guns and they are like a magical tool. So I'll probably do another video on all the ways you can use a heat gun for the candle making process. But yes, for today, you will definitely need this, like 100%. All right, and last but not least, actually two more things. So next you will need your device that you'll be doing the marbling with. You can essentially use anything, but what I use is another common household item. Uh, I use a hair barrette. So this used to be a hair pin, you know, like a little safety pin or like a hair pin that you put in your hair. And I just straighten it out and then it makes a perfect marbler. Obviously this is a new one. I didn't use this in my hair. I bought a pack of hairpins specifically for this process, but it's just small enough to get in there and marble your candles with. So I honestly just use these. You could use a paper clip. I know they make like a little mini spatula things that you can do. You probably use a toothpick if you wanted. Um, honestly, I just have these around. So um, yeah, I, I just use this. There we go, that's better. Sorry guys, it was like super saturated in my video earlier and I noticed and it's because my camera, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's weird, but okay. So we're here, we're less saturated now, woo. So I just protect the living hell out of my counter. And so what I actually do, since um, I use bubble wrap in my shipping sometimes, it's recycled bubble, bubble wrap. I actually put a layer of bubble wrap <laughs> under, on the actual counter then I put a towel over it because if you just do a bunch of towel like on itself, no bubble wrap, no plastic, what have you, this is going to drip all the way through it. And it's happened to me. It will leak on your countertop and you don't want that. So the bubble wrap actually protects my counter from the dye in case it seeps through. The towel is a secondary layer just in case any dye gets through. Hey, okay. Oh yeah, we're way less saturated now. It's kind of dark today too. It's kind of cloudy. It's been really sunny. Like it was like 85 degrees a, a couple days ago and now it's cloudy. And I don't know about you, but I'm in such a better mood when it's sunny. Like when it's cloudy, I'm gloomy. I'm not feeling super good. And it's just, I, I don't like rain. I thrive in the heat. Like it could be a hundred degrees out and I thrive in the heat. I know everyone else likes it when it's cold. So a lot of people like the cloudy days. But okay guys, so let's get started. I'm actually gonna put the camera down and I'm gonna give you a view of the whole process. So you'll be like right down by the candle. We'll see each other soon, I promise. Okay, so we are going to make a death before decaf candle. So this will require 
black ink. So we have our black ink right here. First, things first is that there's a couple different ways that you can marble a candle. So the way I do it, and I think it actually depends on the type of wax you have, potentially the type of, nah, maybe not the dye, but definitely the type of vessel and the type of wax you have. I use the Coconut Apricot Cream Wax by Makesy, which used to be the Wooden Wick Co. And this wax is very soft. Um, it burns really slow and nicely, but when you're working with it, it actually is really soft. So uh, I don't have any issues doing my process this way. This is the way that works for me. If you have a different wax or if you use paraffin or if you use soy, your process might be completely different. So I just wanna specify with that. And then also, there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is strictly just like a creative way to make your candle more unique. Like I mentioned, the candle, every single candle is going to come out differently. Okay, so first we're gonna put on our glovies because I don't wanna get burned. Okay, so first we're going to take our heat gun. We're going to take our heat gun and we're going to melt the sides all around the candle for a couple of minutes so we get a little bit of a melt around the candle. So much so that you're going to see it's going to be liquid all around the edges. Not so melted that the entire candle is melted but that so all of the edges are all melted, okay? And so another thing to mention here is that while we're melting it, we are going to slowly turn the candle around and around while it's melting. And this way we ensure that we're going to have an even amount of melt all around the candle. And we're gonna do this for approximately, like maybe like one to two minutes consistently, just to see, um, so we make sure that we're not melting it too much. And then another rule, definitely super important, you never wanna touch your heat gun to the glass. So I would make sure that you keep at least like maybe six or seven inches away, maybe like five or six inches away from your candle because you don't want the heat to be so extreme that you make your glass explode. That is what we want to avoid. So by keeping it at least five or six inches away, we're making sure that it's not getting too hot so that the glass explodes or breaks or shatters, what have you, but just enough so that the wax on the inside of the jar is melting around the edges. All right, y'all, you're down low now. You're gonna watch me marble this here candle. All right, friends, so I'm trying to show you as best as I can. So next we are going to put the dye on our, our barrette. So the way I do this, like I mentioned before, you need the smallest amount of dye, especially a black dye. I'm gonna be using black dye for this candle and you literally need the smallest amount. You do not wanna to put too much in there because it's going to make your candle muddy and dark and you just want a pretty marbling effect. So what I do is I will literally take my little barrette thing and I will either dip it inside the ink or I'll get my dropper and I will just kind of like douse it in the dye just to get it on there ever so slightly. You do not need a full drop, you guys. If you drop it in there, it's gonna be so much dye. You literally need like one third of a single drop to get this effect. And then as you see, I'm just putting the barrette inside of the candle. And you'll see right here that it gets the dye in there. And since the dye is already a little bit melty, it's gonna be a little bit easier. Cause all I want to happen, you guys, is just like a light swirl. Okay. 
Okay, I know it seems like things are getting a little messy right now, but don't worry. We're going to heat it up again so that the ink starts to swirl around on its own, and then we'll have our finished product. And let me tell you that as soon as you take the heat gun off your candle, it's going to start drying, so you got to make it kind of quick. All right, guys, see how it's starting to look just kind of cool and natural and wispy? That's the goal. Honestly, you don't want it to get too muddy and, and melt it so much that all of the colors start to just turn into like a gray. That is not the goal, you guys. You want it to look like cool, natural, wispy, myster mysterious, kind of like what's happening over here. You see how it's getting kind of just like stringy and looking really spooky? That's the goal, my friends. So it's not going to turn out perfect every time, but that's okay because that's art. And you know what? It makes your candle that much more unique if it isn't the same as everything else. And I feel like that's just the goal, you know? And then sometimes if it doesn't look how I want on one side, I'll just take my little poker and I'll kind of like stick it in there to try and move it around how I want. See how like this side is looking a little dark but honestly that's okay I kind of like it that's fine they're not all gonna be perfect so my favorite part of this process is actually doing the tops the tops are like so swirly and twirly and woo. so I'm gonna show you how you want to do your top because right now you see how our top is all chunky and everything well, duh, it's because, oh, I think I got this hot. It's because we've been chopping around in there with our little poker. And that's totally fine because the cool thing about wax is that you could just melt it down and make it perfect, okay? So how we're gonna smooth this out and make this top look super dope is we're gonna take our heat gun and we're just going to melt the top a little bit so the die comes out and it flattens the top. Watch this, guys, so cool. Isn't that so cool, you guys? It just swirls and it looks so cool and unique and just so different than any other candle you've seen. Okay, let's get a little side angle to see how we're looking. So see, the, it will swirl around. If you keep melting it, it'll keep swirling and swirling. So this is perfect. See, it's just kind of drooping down, looking whimsical. All right, y'all, I'm back. <laughs> Glasses are off. Cool, that's my process. And so the cool thing about that too is, like I mentioned, every single marble candle is gonna look a little bit different. You're gonna have super beautiful ones and some might be a little muddy and that's totally fine. But uh, also remember, when you're melting your wax, it's going to become a little more clear. So while you're melting it, it may look darker than it's going to turn out once it dries completely. Because remember, your wax is white so when you melt it, it gets a little bit more clear. So right now that looks a little dark in some areas, but once it dries, it's going to dry like a totally cool white and swirly look. So I have this death pour decaf that I've done already. So see how we have the beautiful label, hi. So if you turn it around, we have some grays, we have some blacks. We have some whites and we have some swirlies and then the top is totally swirly and twirly. So it's gonna turn out different every single time, but just know it's going to dry and you're gonna have whites, you're gonna have lighter versions of the dye in there and the goal is to make it as swirly as possible. So that's why I melted a little bit before in the beginning because I can get my dye in there and so it's just a little bit swirly and it's still a little more concentrated in color. So then when I melt it and keep twisting a little bit more, it allows it to swirl a little bit more. I know some people will 
just stick holes inside their candle while it's still dry and cured. And then they'll put the dye in there and then they'll just blast it with the heat, which will marble it. It's going to melt everything. But for me, it was just turning out, I'll show you what it actually turned out like. So that's what happened with this little tester. So I put in purple and I put in teal and you would think that those would be lighter colors, but no, they're dark. <laughs> they're almost like the color black, like they show up so dark. So see, it just turned out really dark and I mean, it still looks cool, like it's marbly, but it's not that like wispy, just kind of like light marbling that I wanted. It turned out way too dark. So by melting it a little bit, adding just a little bit of dye with your little poker and then melting a little bit more so it swirls around, I just feel like I'm able to control the dye better and I'm able to more so, yeah, just like control how it's going to look in the end. All right, guys, yeah, so by the end of it, once your candle dries in like a day or so, it's going to look like this, hopefully. It's gonna look different, but it's gonna look really similar. So yeah, I would let it cure again, um, maybe for like a week, or what have you, whatever your, whatever your wax cure time is, I would let it cure again as if it, like I would consider it to be like a new melted candle because you want the wax to dry and what have you. So um, yeah, that's it. Hopefully you liked my video. That's my process, that's the secret. It's, it's hard, it's easy, it gets easier, but it's fun, it adds a little bit of fun to it. Anywho, my camera's dying, so if you liked this video and you want to see more videos, please be sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel so I can stick around and show you more of my candle making process and so we can have some more fun together. Um, if you want to purchase any of my candles, you can go to my Etsy account, which is Drip From The Crypt, and I'll link it down below in the show notes. If you want to hang out with me on Instagram and see more Silly Kim content, you can find me at Drip From The Crypt underscore. And also, if you're ever curious about any of the materials that I use or any of my supplies, I will link them down below in the show notes. Anywho, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I love teaching you about my creative process. Hopefully, I will see you around here soon. If not, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!